An article about COVID-19 pops up in your feed, and at first, you believe it. After all, it comes from a trusted source, or so you think. Don't be deceived. In the age of COVID-19, there are many ways that disinformation, misleading or false information, is disseminated. During a pandemic, disinformation is dangerous. It creates confusion and makes people less likely to recognize facts and make informed decisions about their health and safety. But how do you know a source is truthful? In this video, we'll present you with questions to ask yourself. If the answer is yes to any, it's an indicator suggesting you should give it more scrutiny. Does it confirm your beliefs? Some disinformation preys upon your own belief systems. It might start with a kernel of truth or something that you believe in and care about. Take, for example, the claim that wearing a mask can result in deadly carbon dioxide poisoning. If you were concerned about wearing a mask, this might confirm your belief that masks are ineffective or even harmful, when in fact the opposite is true. Does it trigger an emotional response? You might come across a statement like this one, claiming that COVID-19 will just go away miraculously. Or maybe you heard that Silver Solution could cure COVID-19 entirely, as claimed by televangelist Jim Baker. These false statements play with your emotions because, well, you want COVID-19 to go away. Surely there must be a quick fix. Is it difficult to separate facts from opinions? You may have seen President Trump suggesting that the actual COVID-19 death toll could be lower than is reported by the CDC and other public health organizations. This is a false statement. According to the New York Times, most statisticians and public health experts say he is wrong. The death toll is probably far higher than what is publicly known. So how would you know that the president's statement was an opinion and not factual? For one, it directly conflicts with expert opinions. For another, the president didn't cite any sources, which leads us to, are experts not quoted or cited? If you don't see any sources attributed, especially from reputable government or public health organizations, you have reason to doubt. For example, British tabloids, The Daily Mail and The Sun, ran stories showing satellite images of sulfur dioxide levels in Wuhan, China, which were inferred to mean that China was burning corpses to cover up COVID-19 deaths. The stories lacked expert sources or confirmation, but if you read these stories when they first appeared, you may have been persuaded. When this story was debunked by experts, the Daily Mail issued a retraction and the Sun article mysteriously vanished. But you would have missed that unless you followed up. Likewise, where you get your information plays a key role. You are more likely to encounter false information on Facebook, Twitter, or dodgy news sources than in articles from reputable news organizations. Does it seem implausible? You might come across a post that you deem too implausible, like this one, claiming you can be protected from COVID-19 simply by drinking water. Or maybe you heard something about a link between COVID-19 and 5G cell phone towers, which is definitely not a thing. Yet enough people bought into the story that 77 cell towers were set on fire in the UK as a result. Is it difficult to pin down the original source or timestamp? If you cannot find the original source or timestamp, the greater the likelihood that the information is not credible or reliable. One of the best ways to mislead the public is to mask the original source of information. Does the source have a stake in the claim? Disinformation comes from many places. Governments, corporations, conspiracy theorists, leaders with a political agenda, social media influencers, profiteers. I mean, the list goes on. For example, when you see Alex Jones advertising silver toothpaste to boost your immune system, you can bet he has a financial stake in the success of that product. According to other research analysts, it's about not only who benefits now, but also about who profits later from the gradual erosion of institutional belief. As you evaluate sources, it's helpful to think about these possible motivations. Disinformation is never a good thing, but during a pandemic, it is downright dangerous and can literally mean the difference between life and death. For example, the President of the United States has suggested injecting bleach, an incredibly dangerous thing to do as a potential cure for COVID-19. In this moment, when we desperately need 
clear science from experts. It's time to stop the disinformation around COVID-19 in its tracks. Armed with these questions, you are now better prepared to recognize fact from fiction and help save lives.